<laughs> right? And so negative sixes have learned to operate in a world that has been, um, that has allowed them to, to do that. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the 22s, and we're going to come back to the, the negative sixes. We're going to talk about the 13s. Uh, 13s are courageous, they're connected, and they find uh, allies. What did you notice about the 13s, the people who, who spoke up in the, in the, uh, the bakery? What did you notice about them? A lot of them weren't alone, right? So they had support. And they either had uh, physical support by having an extra body, or they were emotionally attached to someone that they were going to step up for. So they had some, some connections. Uh, they were courageous. And what is courage? If I was king of the forest, courage. Yes. So they really had conviction, they stood up for something that they believed in. What else is courage? Being brave. All right, it's what? Being brave. So, so what does it mean to be brave? What is, the, what is the prerequisite for courage? What has to be a part of your mindset before you can have courage? Fear. Fear. Right? So fear, you must have fear. And, and a lot of times people get fear um, boxed in the, the small thing and, and it's a little more sophisticated than oftentimes we, we like to think about it. And, and fear is that emotional ambiguity to a, certain, to a situation, not knowing what's going to happen. But fear is also a level of respect that you give an adversary so that you don't take them for granted. For example, on Lake Minnetonka, I have fear on Lake Minnetonka. Why? Because the lake is greater than I am, and so I have to give that lake some respect. I have to give it fear so that I, I stay safe. Right? And so courage is taking fear and acting anyway. Um, next is connected and allies. So um, the 22. These are the people who did not act when they could. Um, they, they were full of fear. They were the silent majority. Um, in, 19, in, in the 1970s, there was a guy by the name of Richard Nixon. And many of you are too young to remember who he was. But he was the president that looked like a potato. <laughs> I'm not a cook. Right? And so, uh, so, so, President Nixon coined this phrase, the silent majority. And what do you think he was talking about when he spoke about the silent majority? <laughs> What's the silent majority? <laughs> right? It's real funny that uh, we, we like to uh, we like to raise the, the dead as martyrs, and so we, we give you know dead heroes and even dead villains. We give them, we shine them in the in the best light. And I find it interesting that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was is being raised up as this Lamb of Peace, right? Uh, but towards the end of the Civil Rights Movement, he was getting really ticked off. And he was getting really ticked off at the 22. He wrote this letter. So if you are going to be a, 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 a person that demands justice, you have to read the letter from a Birmingham jail. That is a must read. All right? And in this letter, he writes this letter because he's frustrated with 22s. And he's frustrated with 22s who are Christian. So he writes this letter, how can you as brothers and sisters in Christ tell us that this is not the time, that we should wait till later, right? He said justice denied is what? I mean justice delayed is justice denied. And so he wrote this letter and he was really upset because there were tons of people who said or did nothing. Why do you think people choose not to do anything? Safety. It's safety? Okay. For themselves. For themselves. All right. They don't want anything to be changed. They don't want anything to be changed. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to do the work. They don't believe they can make a difference. They don't believe that they can make a difference. So there's this phenomenon that happens in um, in Minnesota. It happens probably in the upper Midwest. 
uh, in general, where we have these, um, you know, these 150, 200 pound animals that are just running around in the forest, right? Some of them have little hooks on their heads and others don't, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but every so often, one of these critters is just kind of hopping along and then they come across this thing called an interstate. <laughs> and so they're just kind of bouncing along and then they see these shiny things and they get stuck. Right? Deer in the headlights. Why do you think that the deer gets stuck in the headlights? He wants to be a steak on a plate. He wants to be a steak on a plate. He's offering himself as a sacrifice. Right? The deer are surprised. Right? So the deer are surprised. And what they say is, what is that? Agnes, do you see that? What is that over there? Right? So they're surprised. And what ends up happening if they don't snap out of their surprise? They get hit because they don't move. And I would submit to you that a lot of times when we... Okay, I have been in situations where I've encountered negative sixes. And I've been in situations where I've encountered uh, thirteens. And there have been times when I have been a twenty-two when I saw something and I just didn't do anything about it, right? Most of the times when, when I'm not able to move is because I'm full of fear, but the fear isn't what you think it is. It's not that I'm fearful of, the, uh, of any kind of physical retribution or that I'm fearful that, um, that you know, something will happen to me or to the other person, but typically I'm afraid because I've never thought about that situation before. I don't know what to do. And so the interesting thing is, when we find ourselves in this, this 22 moment, when we get stuck and we don't know what to do, and we do nothing, guess what happens? The universe says, I'm going to bring it back again and see if they learned anything. Hmm. And if I don't learn anything, if I don't do anything, guess what happens? It comes back again in some other form to see if I've learned something. And so one of the things that we have to do is, in these situations, we have to think ahead and say, okay, I didn't do so well on that one. Um, the, the next time that happens, I'm going to think about this, or I'm going to breathe before I say something. And, and so then you start becoming more creative, because otherwise, you, you let things pass, and you miss opportunities to be bridges to people. Right? So I'm, I'm at Cub, and in front of me is, um, is a woman who, um, who's a little bit impatient, and in front of her is a woman who has a, a cart full of groceries, kids, uh, she's got four kids, cart full of groceries, and she's in the candy aisle. And the kids are trying to sneak candy into the thing, right? So she's trying to manage all of this. And she obviously has limited English. And I think her primary language is Spanish. And, um, and I only know that because she's talking you know, with the kids and trying to communicate with the, the, uh, the cashier. And every now and then she'll say an English word that I understand. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. So I'm keyed in on what she's saying. And so, uh, so I, I'm, I'm in this interaction, and the woman in front of me is acting in a way that my grandmother would call ugly. All right? So she's doing this. And so I'm like, oh, I know what this is about, right? I'm like, I'm a diversity trainer. I've got PowerPoint in the car. I've got my posters and I've got my handouts ready. I can just go get them and have a training right here. Um, and then I come to my senses and realize that that's not the, the best way to approach this. And so I do something very simple, something that I learned as a teacher. And I go, <coughs> Once I do that, what happens to her behavior? It changes. Why does her behavior change? Is there somebody else observing? So as much as we want to be on America's Most Wanted, you know, uh, top model, idol shows, nobody likes to be watched. And so I was holding her accountable, and I, I caused her some cognitive dissonance so she could think about her own behavior. And she did, and she said, I need to straighten up. Now, did I change the way she acts for the rest of her life? I would say no. But will she think about how she acts in situations that are similar to that? I would say yes. 
The last thing I'm going to go back to is that um, the 22 are going to be the 22, and we need to encourage.